I think it, it's a win-win uh, proposal for everybody involved. This could be one of the, the things which would build the economic resurgence, you say so. You can look to eliminate the most unvir environmentally unsound generating practices. It will help stabilize or reduce population growth. I can assure you that technology is there and it is uh, available. Powerful words describing a powerful concept whose time has come. These are the conclusions of 36 experts from around the world who came together recently in Winnipeg, Canada under the coordination of Global Energy Network International, known as Genie. They convene to discuss, dissect, and analyze the limits of long-distance high-voltage power transmission. They were most concerned about the corresponding economic, environmental, and socio-political implications. The results were clear and convincing. It will be a strengthening force with, with um, the United Nations, definitely, enhancing global cooperation and an interdependency between nations and for mutual benefits to be realized which wouldn't be possible otherwise without the technology. Advances in high voltage transmission and automated distribution make it feasible for many power entities to optimize the production and supply of electric energy. Power grids are not new. The transfer of power from one agency to another across adjoining networks results in dramatic benefits to everyone. The working group focusing on the economic implications uncovered significant bottom line rewards. We could look at many of the success stories that have taken place over the years uh, with various countries. And experience has always shown in doing these uh, developments for interconnect interconnections between electrical systems that the benefits that are, are achieved have always greatly exceeded the assumed benefits that were the economic justification or that provided the economic justification to get the interconnection established in the first place. We've done a lot of analyses of interconnection and I've never run a, against a case where there isn't tremendous saving. The economics of electrical supply have been overwhelming in favor of continuing with the development of this form of energy. The present standard of living of the developed countries does demonstrate this and suggests the developing countries should be targeted for an improved level of electrical supply. Interconnections will play an important role in this task of electrifying the developing countries. The summary states that when all the environmental costs of power generation were taken into account, the use of remote renewable energy sources would be more economical. Just as meaningful would be enhanced global cooperation. The strengthening and stabilizing of relationships between nations and regions would result from expanding electric networks. Uh, for example, a month ago, uh, the institute I'm uh, associated with uh, was the organizer of the first European energy conference that will um, bring together East and West and that will facilitate the link between the Eastern European energy grids and West European energy grids, thus uh, making preparatory steps to establish probably the, uh, the biggest energy grid in the world. But perhaps one of the most significant interconnections that took place uh, within a very short period after the Berlin Wall came down was the one that connected East and West Germany. And that was a, that actually was accomplished in about two months because the economic benefits were so significant. Uh, the differences tend to be laid aside in favor of the overpowering economic rewards, <laughs> put it that way. The group concluded that by phasing the development of power grids between first and third world nations, a more equitable distribution of world energy could be achieved. Similarly, those analyzing the environmental impacts drew impressive conclusions. The most important effect of the environmental aspect is that the, the movement of energy from one place to another could result in the elimination of inefficient, polluting old plants and the deferring of new facilities. And also, incidentally, some of the larger uh, 
developing countries, like for example, People's Republic of China, which is reliant very much, less like India, on a great deal of coal-fired generation. But they don't have to. They could, if they tap into their big river systems, uh, they can have clean power in perpetuity. The tendency would be to reduce the greenhouse gases and the, also the acid rain, which is coming from, from coal. And we felt that what is needed now is as much public debate of the issue uh, from an environmental viewpoint as is necessary. And an obvious focus for us in this regard is next year's UN conference in Rio de Janeiro. And we think that this issue needs to be on the agenda there because uh, the implications go far beyond just the technical, the, the socio-political and the other factors, but do include this broad environmental perspective. They concluded the lack of access to efficient energy often causes negative environmental effects, deforestation, topsoil erosion and desertification. The question was raised, would extended grid systems create winners and losers? I think it would be a win-win situation in which there would be a question of how much you benefit as opposed to somebody losing and somebody benefiting. I think it, it's a win-win uh, proposal for everybody involved. The issue of EMF fields around power lines was also discussed. It certainly is an issue. The, there are no results in yet to indicate that the electromagnetic field is, will cause genetic damage or cancers, but it's certainly an item of concern. It is being investigated by a number of nations, by research institutions within the United States, and that's one hazard, or say potential hazard, that has to be addressed. There is no corner of the planet that would not benefit from interconnecting systems. Studies are now looking into solar thermal generation in northern Africa and exporting by cable into southern Europe. Massive developments of hydro in, in Central Africa, say in, 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 in Inga, to, to say something, uh, that could go, uh, that could be transmitted uh, up north uh, and cross uh, the uh, Mediterranean Sea into uh, Sicily, say, uh, and, and then being the heart of Italy and consequently in, in, in uh, Western Europe. And that will create in Africa health systems in the villages, road, pilot roads to agriculture, basic education for children, water supply, clean water supply, irrigation for crops, all these things which now are not possible. Do you think this will result in the reduction of world hunger? Yes, certainly.